smiled charmingly. It must have been difficult for Ellie to try for so long and get a heart. After all, she'd been searching for her entire life without any success. Did you think that you were suddenly so lucky? She thought. Ellie's face became very tense. She stared at the woman who led her to expose Madison's background, and thus caused Ellie's parents to despise her. Because of this woman, her family life was now extremely difficult. What with Jared's sudden fear. She couldn't just forget about that so easily. Who are you? Ellie asked, when she had calmed down a little. She had known about Madison not being a Greenwald for a long time, and she had also known that Madison's real mother had killed Ian's parents. After all, she had been close with Diana since she had been very young, and she remembered learning that she had once had two sons. Although there were people in the city who knew about this, they didn't dare speak of it. However, the information had gotten to Ellie anyway. When she had found out about the relationship between the Thompson family and the Morris family, she hadn't been surprised at all. Madison had never been a member of the Greenwald family to begin with. Ellie had known as much. What she hadn't known, however, was that the real Greenwald was her university classmate, Kate King. While the Thompsons had been on good terms with the Morris family in the past, once they had left the city, Ellie had exposed their last bit of capital. She hadn't known that Sue had been behind their getting Lynn's heart, though. Sue paid no attention to Ellie. She took a sip of the coffee that the waiter had brought them, and her brows came together slightly as if she wasn't satisfied with the taste. She put the cup down and didn't take another sip after that. Then she looked up at Ellie and asked, Who do you think I am? Ellie paused, thinking, Do you know my parents? She asked. Sue gave her a bright smile, and Ellie was struck by her beauty. Sue laughed wildly, and the sound carried a strange, fatal beauty. You have no idea how familiar I am with your parents. We're so familiar, I wish I could see them die before my very eyes, Sue thought. Who do you think you are to ask me questions? She asked with a charming smile. Don't you realize what I've got on you? Ellie's face paled and it dawned on her who Sue was. It's her, the woman who found me before and told me about Madison not being a Greenwald. Now she's got me to tell everyone. She knows that I tried to get Lynn's heart twice. There's no way that I can go against her, Ellie thought. She wished that she could strangle Sue on the spot. But even as she tried, she wouldn't have been able to. Sue was no longer the helpless young woman she had been all those years ago. While Ellie had thought that the information on Madison hadn't been much of a consequence, Sue had used it to deepen the conflict between Madison and Ellie. She wanted the Greenwalds and the Thompsons to go against each other. But after the news had been released, John's and Jared's reactions had been different than she had expected. Instead of opposing each other, the two families were getting closer. Satisfied with Ellie's change in expression, Sue stood up and put on her sunglasses. In a soft voice, she said, I came here today to send your father a message. Tell him to open his eyes and take a proper look. With those words, she turned around and walked out of the salon. She left as quickly as she had come. Her message would make the entire Thompson family very restless, and Ellie felt she needed to find somebody powerful to become her backer. Two days later, Ellie once again stood before the Weston's front door. The house staff didn't dare just let her in, and instead sent a message to Diana. They were informed that the old lady didn't wish to see her, but Ellie remained nailed to the spot and wouldn't leave no matter what. In time, the sky became overcast, and it seemed that it would be raining soon. Ellie remained in place stubbornly, and eventually she took out her phone and called Diana. She tried multiple times, only getting through on the tenth attempt when Diana finally gave in. Grandma, Ellie greeted her, her eyes welling with tears. When the staff saw her so sad, they looked at her with pity. Are you ignoring me? Diana frowned down at the phone fiercely for a long while. Then she sighed and her attitude softened. Do you know me? Please just give me a chance to explain. I don't want you to be disappointed with me, Ellie said, 
knowing that it was Diana who held the most power in the Weston family. Luckily, she knew just how to play the old lady. And with just a few words, Ellie was led inside. When Olivia saw Ellie walk into the house with tears flowing down her face, she narrowed her eyes at her. The girl truly was very capable. Not only has she deceived their entire family, but she was being led back into the house after such a short time. She didn't interfere with Diana's decision and instead turned around and went to her room. However, in her heart, she was even more unhappy with Ellie than she had been before. Ellie met Diana in her room, which was filled with the smell of vintage furniture. Diana sat on a rattan chair by the window and didn't even turn to look at her when she entered. Ellie remained in the doorway, looking at the old woman's back. In a nasal voice, she cried out, Grandma! Diana stiffened, but didn't say anything. She had watched Ellie grow up, and even after she had been away for so long, she had always believed that the child's mind was pure. Still, she had been slapped in the face when Ellie had lied to her. It only made sense that she would be disappointed. Ever since the last time they had seen each other, Diana had only worried about two things. Ian had insisted on following Madison and leaving the family, and Ellie had become the way that she was. Both of these things had been like knives to her heart. Ellie walked over to her slowly and knelt before her. She spoke to Diana in a soft voice, trying to placate her. Don't you miss me? I've come to see you. Diana hadn't initially wanted to push her away, but she stopped when she heard her words. The hand that she had raised touched Ellie's head, and she was filled with a kind, loving feeling. She hadn't watched any of her grandchildren grow up, but she had watched Ellie. Ellie broke into tears at the touch of Diana's hand. She reached out and grabbed onto Diana's clothes. You know that I would never do anything to disappoint you. Why won't you believe me? My heart hurts, she said. Diana's throat tightened, and she looked at Ellie quietly. After a while, Ellie raised her head to look at her through eyes full of tears. What I'm going to tell you is very serious, but you have to promise me that you won't be angry, okay? I don't want you to hurt because of something that has already happened, she told Diana. Diana's eyes narrowed as Ellie spoke, and she felt herself becoming a little nervous. Ellie stopped crying and paid attention to Diana's body language. Finally, she asked, You once had two sons, didn't you? Ian is the child of your older son, right? Diana felt that any remaining sunlight had been swallowed by gloom. As if to match her mood, it began raining. I know that Ian isn't Edward's son, and I also know that his parents died in a plane accident. Ellie continued in a mellow voice. I want to marry Ian, not only because I love him, but also because I cannot allow him to be with Madison. Diana was very stiff. She sat, staring at Ellie with her eyes wide open. Her appearance was somewhat unsettling, and Ellie's face twisted as she prepared to tell Diana the truth. I've been sick all of my life. You know that. But now that I've finally gotten my health back, all I want to do is be with the man that I love and be a good granddaughter to you. But Ian doesn't love me. She glanced at Diana as she skillfully showed the right amount of motion. But Diana made no move to interrupt her. Ellie's grip on her tightened, sensing the old lady's dissatisfaction with her. What Ian said is true. I can't get pregnant, and I can never give you a great-grandchild. But even so, I am a hundred times more suitable for Ian than Madison. At least I'm not his enemy, and I wouldn't make his life difficult as Madison will. Diana looked at her confused, and Ellie jumped to explain right away. How could they possibly be together, when Madison is the daughter of the woman who took his parents' lives? It was like she had set up a bomb. All the blood left Diana's face, and her body began to tremble violently. She found it hard to catch her breath. Madison is Sue's daughter, she thought. Ellie quickly went to soothe her and said, No, I can't have my child, but Madison is already pregnant with Ian's baby. They have divorced, 
So that means that he doesn't want her to be in the family, right? That means that sooner or later, the child will return to the Westons. I can raise it. I can be its mother. All I want is to be Ian's wife. I don't want him to have a hard life. Diana listened to what Ellie was saying, and she gradually calmed down again. So the woman's name was Sue. When Ellie thought of the red spider lily tattoos on her arm, chills ran down her spine. For some reason, the woman scared Ellie. She couldn't help but feel like she was some kind of malicious ghost coming for her life. Ellie nodded and answered Diana's question. Yes, she is. As soon as the words had left her mouth, Diana seemed to lose all of her strength. Her eyes, normally so lively, filled with tears, and her entire body trembled. Sue, that wretched woman has come back, she thought. Years before, her eldest son had died young because Sue had vented her anger on others, and Diana had tasted a bitterness unparalleled by anything else in life. She had hated the woman so much that she had wanted to kill her with her own hands. However, before the Westons were able to do anything, they had gotten news that she had fallen off of a cliff. But her body hadn't been found below. It was as if she had disappeared into thin air. For so many years, Diana had sent people to search for her. Because of Ian, she had never done this openly. But now, Sue had returned. She hadn't expected her to come back after such a long time. And even after all those years... She still wanted to avenge her son. She felt like laughing, but instead tears flowed down her cheeks. Alan was so innocent, he didn't deserve to die. If she hadn't killed him, Ian would still have a family. He might even have younger siblings, she thought mournfully. When Ellie saw that Diana was no longer shaking, she said, I didn't tell you this before because I was afraid that you would be sad. But now, with this misunderstanding between us, you didn't even want to see me. And Ian is so stubborn about Madison. I just can't stand it anymore. Diana looked at Ellie, who was crying like a child. And for a moment, she felt like she was looking at Renee instead. Back then, she had cried just as pitifully. But Diana had still ruthlessly chased her and Ellen out. If she hadn't done so at that time, perhaps they would have still been alive. She stroked Ellie's hair. She wouldn't dwell on things that Ellie had done in the past. She didn't have the energy to do so. All she could think about was Sue and how she wouldn't let her get away this time around. What should we do, Grandma? Ellie asked sadly. She buried her face in Diana's knee so that the old woman couldn't see the coldness in her eyes. Ellie knew that Diana was a very selfish person. As long as someone was good to her and her family, she would acknowledge them. But if they weren't, they were just trash to her. Ellie's lie had been very small, yet Diana had reacted extremely harshly. It couldn't be said whether or not she would have taken Ellie back if she hadn't come with such large news. Diana was silent for a long time. Eventually, Ellie got up and sat in the room, waiting for an answer. Diana took her time. It seemed like hours had passed when Diana stood up and walked out. Jean, she called out into the hallway, and soon Jean came up to the door. Diana looked at her and said, Call the entire family back. Jean agreed, then she glanced at Ellie and asked Diana, What about Ian? Diana paused. Call him over in half an hour, she replied. It was the weekend and neither Daniel nor Cassandra was at home. Jean called them to return to the house quickly, and then went upstairs to tell Olivia and Edward that Diana wanted to see them. Soon, everyone but Ian was present. They gathered in the living room, where Diana sat on the couch next to Ellie, holding the girl's hand. Ellie's head was lowered, and she remained silent. She was the very picture of obedience. Nobody could say anything about her being there, although they were surprised that Diana had changed her mind. They had to admit that Ellie was very capable if she had gotten Diana to take her back, 
after chasing her out. Edward and Olivia had taken their seats opposite Diana, and when Daniel and Cassandra arrived, they felt a depressing atmosphere in the house. They exchanged a glance and quickly sat down. Before any of them could ask what was going on, Diana looked up and spoke. Sue has returned. She is in the city as we speak, she said, surprising all of them. Edward and Olivia turned pale, and Daniel and Cassandra stood up, shocked. Sue had come back. Did Ian know? Would he do something stupid? They were all thinking about what this would mean for them, but they didn't dare ask a single question out loud. Diana wasn't aware that Ian knew about being Alan's son, so they couldn't speak about it with her. They wondered when Diana had become so naive. Surely she must have figured it out. But Diana could see it clearly. Ian had insisted on marrying Madison before he knew her identity. But then he had mysteriously divorced her. Even now that she was pregnant, they still hadn't remarried. There could only be one reason for that. He must know about everything. He knew that Alan was his real father and that Madison was Sue's daughter. He also knew that Sue had killed Alan. Diana looked at them seriously. After a while, Edward found his voice. Didn't she die? I thought she fell off a cliff, he asked. She had fallen from such a height that there would have been no way for her to survive the impact. But her body had never been found, and nobody was able to locate her anywhere else either. She seemed to have vanished from the world. Now she had suddenly returned. They didn't know too much about Sue's past. The only thing they knew was that she had been responsible for the deaths of Ian's parents. The plane explosion had been no accident. It had been a deliberate attack. Sue's past wasn't really important to the Westons. All they cared about was what she had done to their family. Olivia looked over at Ellie and got a very bad feeling. Before she could say anything, Diana threw another bomb at them. Madison is Sue's daughter. They all stared at her dumbstruck. Daniel and Cassandra held their breath as Edward and Olivia felt their hearts beat crazily. They would never have guessed that the world would be small enough to bring Ian into marriage with Sue's daughter. But it was. And now they were even having a child of their own. Diana looked at Olivia. Does Ian know about his background? She asked, her tone very serious. Although Diana was old, she hadn't lost her ability to think. While no one had told her whether or not Ian knew, she had realized it herself. Now, all she needed was confirmation. Olivia opened her mouth to answer, but no words came out. In the end, she just silently nodded her head. Diana sighed heavily and leaned back against the couch. The movement scared everyone present, and they all stood up, ready to help her if she needed it. Ellie's head snapped up toward the old lady, and only when she saw that Diana was okay did she relax. Diana was the person she was relying on, and she didn't know what she would do if something happened to her. Diana took a few deep breaths and asked Jean to call on Ian. Both Olivia and Edward were very nervous. They were scared that Diana was going to do something irrational. Daniel and Cassandra wanted to contact Ian more and more with every passing second to give him a heads up, but they had no chance to do so under Diana's watchful stare. Daniel narrowed his eyes at Ellie. She had always looked so soft and kind, and it was almost unbelievable that she could be so vicious. Her revelation of this one secret had put them all in difficult position, and they were all helpless against Diana's wishes. Although Daniel didn't know too many details about what had occurred back then, he still remembered what had happened to Ian. The poor little boy had watched his parents get on the plane with his own eyes. He had stood waving at them with a smile. But then, out of nowhere, the plane exploded in the air right before his eyes. Without warning, the sky had been filled with fire and smoke, illuminating the tiny Ian. The sound of the explosion had shaken the entire airport hall, and everyone had covered their ears. However, little Ian stood there at the window, forgetting to cry. Diana had forced Alan and Renee to leave Ian with her. If she hadn't, he would have been on that plane too. 
After the incident, Diana left the Weston home because she felt either guilty or uneasy. And that was when she met Ellie. The children had been young when the accident had taken place, and they hadn't been involved in the matter. However, this didn't mean that they didn't remember. Although Diana and Abe had been very angry, they had still loved Alan very much, and it had been an incomparably hard time for them. However, they had been the ones to hurt Ian so badly by forcing his parents to leave the country. Daniel remembered that Ian had only come back to his senses after a long time. He had cried for his mother and father. He had cried so much that they had thought he would never recover. Although Daniel had been young at the time, he still remembered. Ian had been so sad and helpless, like an abandoned animal alone in a dangerous forest. He had been completely lost, and the memory still made Daniel's heart ache. After the accident, Abe soon passed away, and Diana had gone abroad, leaving the remaining Westons alone in the country. Later, when she had returned, she had still doted on her grandchildren very much, but there had always been a sort of compensatory air to it. With the sudden news out in the open, they all waited quietly for Ian to arrive. After all, the only people who could have a say in this matter were Ian, who had lost his parents, Diana, who had lost her son, and Edward, who had lost his brother. Soon, Jean opened the door and Ian walked in. Ellie raised her eyes in his direction, and their eyes met. There was no emotion on his face as he looked at her, but she told herself that it didn't matter. All she wanted was to be by his side as his wife, no matter how iron-hearted he was. She would do anything to achieve that. He walked inside quickly. There was tension in the room, as quite some time had passed since they had last met. Diana's eyes had been on him from the moment he had arrived. They were a little red, but nobody knew if this was due to sadness or anger. Ian came up to stand before Diana, but didn't speak. Diana didn't beat around the bush. I want you to immediately start preparing to marry Ellie. The child Madison is carrying will be taken into the Weston family, and it will be raised by Ellie instead. I want you to cut off any ties you have with Madison right away, she commanded. Ian was shocked. He hadn't expected to be met with such words for the first time he stepped back into the Weston family home. He frowned at Diana, and it looked like he was angry. Cassandra quickly walked up to him and grabbed his arm, afraid that he would do something stupid. Both Olivia and Edward quickly rose to their feet, and Edward came to stand before Ian blocking him, while Olivia walked over to Diana. Don't you think that this is a bit too much? She asked. Diana was outraged by her words. Too much? She responded, furious. She slapped Olivia's hand away, and the woman took a step away from her in shock. Daniel went up to his mother, supporting her. Diana glared at them and unleashed some of the anger she had been carrying around with her for many years. Too much. How on earth could this be too much after what Sue did? What did my poor son ever do to provoke her? How did he deserve this? I don't care what that woman wants to do. I can ignore her smuggling and drug trafficking, but I won't ignore the fact that she dared touch my son. As she spoke, her eyes became redder and redder, and her body began to shake uncontrollably. Her angry words were underlined by the sudden tears that rolled down her face. What did Alan ever do to offend her? All I want is for my grandson to keep a distance from her daughter. Do you think it's too much? What about what Sue did back then? Wasn't that too much? Olivia stared at her, her face pale. Although she didn't like being yelled at, she understood Diana's mentality. After all, she was also a mother and no mother would be able to accept the death of her child, especially at such an early age. It was like when the Morrises had lost Lynn. It was the same principle. The sad thing was that this was just the way of the world. People took from each other, and some people died young. Diana stomped on the ground furiously, refusing to back down. She looked at Ian and shouted, 
I'm not letting this go. How about Sue coming and returning my son and daughter-in-law to me? How about her returning Ian's father and mother? I don't care about the child Madison is carrying anymore. I would give everything up just for Sue to return them to me. Not only Diana was crying now, even Edward's eyes had begun to water. Alan would always be there in his memory. A man who smiled and faced everything head on. He had been strong and brave, but he had been just a man, and he had lost his temper because of a woman. That just wasn't something that the Weston family could have accepted. Diana glared at Ian. I don't know what you want or don't want to do. You are to start preparing for your wedding with Ellie at once. You don't need to worry about Madison's child anymore. We will take care of it for you. From today onward, you don't need to worry about anything, she asserted. Ian fully realized the severity of the situation, but he refused to give up on Madison, and he wasn't willing to compromise with Diana on the subject. However, now that she had him in her house, she wouldn't just let him leave. Take Ian back to his room and lock him up. Nobody is allowed to see him without my permission, Diana ordered loudly. Ian gave her a disbelieving look. Very quickly, the house staff came forward and grabbed him. He fought against them, but he knew that he couldn't outright disobey Diana. Olivia stepped forward to speak for Ian, not caring for herself anymore. Diana, Ian is old enough to make his own decisions. He will think it through, Olivia said, but she was quickly scolded by Diana. I don't care how old he is, he's still my grandson, she shouted angrily. This was the first time that she had talked to Olivia with so little respect in front of people who weren't family. She turned to the house staff and said, Take him up into the room and get Trent's people to guard the door. Trent Torres was the man in charge of the Weston family security. It was said that he was a retired Special Forces agent. Both Daniel and Ian had been trained by him, but only Diana could call him Trent. They'd always referred to him as Master Torres. Daniel and Cassandra became significantly more anxious at the mention of Trent. Ian glared at Diana, his eyes ice cold. Have you forgotten that I'm no longer a member of the family? You should know better than to treat me like this, he said. If she insisted on going through with this, he would have no regrets about being completely cut off from them. His words did nothing to sway Diana, however. Leave then, if you can. Otherwise, you will be a Weston for the rest of your life. Trent, take him upstairs, she ordered. Ian continued to struggle, but Trent came forward and aimed an expert blow at his neck. While most of Ian's skills had been learned from Trent, he still couldn't overpower his master. He wasn't even able to parry the attack. His eyes closed, and from what seemed like far away, he heard Diana's voice. Since you don't want to obey me, I'll have to force you. If she said anything after that, Ian didn't hear it. His mind was in a daze, but he still remembered the pale faces of his family as Diana had made her move. He woke up lying on his bed in his room. He got up quickly, ignoring the pain in his neck. The only thing he cared about was getting out. He walked toward the door, but before he could reach it, it opened from the outside, and Ian caught a glimpse of the hallway. Diana had sent four people to guard him. Among them, he had noticed Master Taurus himself. Ian's expression was cold as he faced Ellie, but she still came in and closed the door. She leaned against it, blocking his way, and looked at him intensely. She tried very hard to ignore the coldness in his eyes and mustered up all her courage. You can't get out. There are four people outside, and the whole house is filled with even more men who are here to keep you from escaping, she told him. Ian ignored her and pushed her away from the door. She stumbled and tripped, falling to the floor. But all Ian could think about was that it was already dark, and that Madison would surely be anxious if he didn't show up soon. Madison, she always smiles so sweetly, and now she must be waiting up for me to come back, worried, he thought. She would be eight months pregnant in two weeks. He didn't want her to worry about him. Ellie gave a soft cry from the floor. Ian opened the door and was about to leave without even glancing back at her, but he was stopped by the people outside before he even managed to cross the threshold. 
Nonetheless, he didn't stop trying. Every time they pushed him back, he tried walking out again. He didn't care how long it would take, he would continue trying until he succeeded. Ellie backed away and watched his persistence with a cold feeling in her heart. She felt incredibly jealous. Why? Why is Madison so lucky? She is just a common woman, yet she was raised as a Greenwald. While there's no great fortune, it was still enough to ensure her a good life, and it made her lucky enough to marry Ian. Now that she's carrying his child too, and she's even stolen his heart. Why? Where did I go wrong? Ellie thought. She glared at the scene with hatred. She was so angry that her nails dug deep into the palms of her hand. It must have been painful, but she didn't even register the feeling. Please step back, Ian, or we won't be polite, Trent told him, not unkindly. He didn't want to hurt Ian, but they had been ordered by Diana to use extreme means if he proved difficult to handle. Although he'd always liked the boy, he was still Diana's man, and he had to follow orders. They couldn't let him out, not only because of the old lady's wishes, but also because of the upcoming changes in the city. There was a storm brewing, and with Diana personally taking action and using such harsh measures, it was sure to be a big one. Ian turned a deaf ear to everything Trent said, and in the end, the man had no choice but to knock him out again. It wasn't so easy this time around, and Ian managed to fight him off for a good amount of time before Trent succeeded. If Ian hadn't been so distressed and outnumbered, they might not have been able to keep him in. After all, the skills that Trent had taught him were only part of his abilities. But Ian was anxious and angry, and he made many mistakes that Trent and his men took advantage of. They took unconscious Ian back to his bed. The fight had alarmed Diana, and she came to see her grandson. Sedate him. As he's so disobedient, I'll force him to stay in his bed. She stated coldly. She turned around and left, and the family doctor came in to inject Ian with a light sedative. Cassandra watched it all happen with wide eyes, but she didn't dare intervene. The dose that the doctor gave Ian was small, but just enough to make him weak and docile. He didn't struggle anymore, and the Weston household entered a strange state. Daniel and Cassandra stood by the bed, looking at their brother for a very long time. Olivia was also there, and although the doctor had been careful with the dosage, she was still worried about her son. As long as Diana wasn't present, she would come to see him whenever she could, even if all she would get was a glimpse of him. The Westons all waited, sensing the quiet before the storm. The world they knew was about to change drastically. Madison stayed up waiting for Ian that night, but he never came home. She stared out of the window at the rain and felt uneasy. Eventually, she fell asleep on the couch, waiting for him to walk through the door. When she woke up, he still wasn't there. They were slowly entering summer, and although it had rained all night, the morning sun was bright and warm. Madison got up and turned on the TV, just as she did every morning. With the news playing in the background, she picked up the phone and dialed Ian's number. His phone was turned off, and she couldn't get through. She set the phone back down in disappointment. She directed her attention to the report on the TV, and was met with a drastic turn of events. At seven o'clock that morning, the Weston family had announced an engagement between them and the Thompson family. The eldest Thompson daughter, Ellie, was marrying the youngest Weston son, Ian. Both families had agreed on this, and the Westons were allegedly already preparing for the wedding. The glass of water that Madison had been drinking fell to the floor with a crash. On the screen, there was a picture of Ellie and Ian, which had been secretly taken. The news host said something, but Madison couldn't hear it over the echoing words in her head. The Westons and Thompsons have announced an engagement between the families. Ellie Thompson will be marrying Ian Weston. She took a deep breath and stared at the screen blankly. 
There came the sounds of both her cell phone and house phone ringing. The empty house quickly became very noisy. Early that morning, Diana had run into a reporter on her morning walk, and she had confirmed the information herself. The public began to quickly suspect Madison's role in the relationship. After all, it had just been confirmed that she wasn't actually Greenwald, and now the father of her child was marrying another woman. Madison tore her eyes away from the screen and stared silently at the wall for a long time. The phones kept ringing again and again, but she turned a deaf ear until they stopped. The TV kept broadcasting scenes between her and Ian, followed by scenes and pictures of the Westons and the Thompsons. The tone of the broadcast seemed especially sarcastic, and her hands clenched into angry fists. When she couldn't take it anymore, she got up, cleaned the glass and water from the floor, and headed to the bedroom. She had a checkup at the hospital that day. A few days before, Ian had promised to accompany her there. She wore a simple high-waisted dress and flat shoes and carried a big bag. When she went outside, everything seemed just like it always had. It was as if nothing had changed. However, she knew that everything was different. Does Ian want to marry Ellie? Could it be true? She wondered. She took a cab to the hospital and tried to keep a low profile. Even though she didn't expect anyone to know her itinerary and come to harass her there. She was lucky as she arrived before the reporters did. However, she wouldn't be so lucky on her way out. She lay on the table at the obstetrics and gynecology department while Dr. Hansen checked up on her. Just as in the past, Madison didn't ask about the child's gender. She lay there quietly, listening to her baby's heartbeat and feeling her entire body filling with strength again. Naturally, Dr. Hansen had seen the morning news. Everybody in the city was losing their mind about it. Yet Madison seemed very calm and at ease. She had even come to the hospital alone, and her physical state was very good. The baby is very healthy. The development is going smoothly, she told her as she helped her sit up. I can see that you've been taking good care of the both of you. Madison smiled and nodded. Ian had also been taking good care of her. He was always around to protect her. She went to sit down with Dr. Hansen by the desk, and the doctor gave her instructions for the time before their next appointment. She was getting close to the end of the pregnancy, and she would soon be giving birth. There were many things that she needed to know, so she listened carefully. When the doctor was done speaking, and saw that Madison was stressed about remembering everything she'd said, she gave her a reassuring smile. Don't worry about remembering everything. I've recorded all of this, and will hand it to Dr. Weston as per usual. He's even called me several times to harass me about taking proper care of you, she added. Madison furrowed her eyebrows. He does that? But then why is he marrying Ellie? She thought. As if reading her mind, Dr. Hansen stopped talking about Ian and poured Madison a glass of water. She let her stay as long as she needed, making herself busy in the meantime. Also, she didn't want to get involved in the drama that Madison was going through. When Madison felt that she was ready to leave, she thanked the doctor and went outside. Dr. Hansen smiled at her as she left. I won't believe it before Ian personally confirms it. I don't believe that he would leave his family for me only to do this, Madison thought. She believed in Ian with all her heart. As she got to the hospital entrance, she stroked her belly lovingly and said, We can trust Daddy, right? As soon as she stepped out of the building, Madison was blinded by a series of bright flashes. She flinched and saw that the hospital entrance had been swarmed by reporters. Luckily, the security guards protected her from them closing in on her. Otherwise, she might have been knocked over. Right away, the reporters began throwing questions at her. Your ex-husband is marrying Ellie Thompson. Does this have anything to do with your recent exposed family background? How do you feel about Miss Thompson being involved in the upbringing of your child? How are you going to be dealing with your family situation? After all, you are pregnant with Ian's child. What do you plan to do? Are you going to hand your child over to the Westons? Have they offered you money in exchange? 
Your ex-husband hasn't appeared in public since the announcement. Do you know where he is? The questions just kept coming and coming, and even the security guards couldn't get the reporters to back off. It seems that nothing could be done about the situation as they continued. Did you use your identity as the eldest Greenwall daughter to marry Ian Weston? Was Ian supposed to marry Kate King? Will you be keeping the child after you give birth? What reward have the Westons offered you for the baby? When you married Ian Weston, you should have been given a project at the Weston Company. According to my sources, no such project has been created. Is this because the Weston family wasn't satisfied with you as Ian's wife? Madison was overwhelmed by the noise and flashing lights, and she pressed her hands protectively on her belly. She felt like she couldn't breathe. Out of nowhere, the crowd was torn apart before her. All the flashes turned away from her, and Madison's eyes narrowed as she looked at the incoming woman. The anxiety that had been caused by the news, and the reporters left her almost at once when she saw that Ellie had arrived alone. She was wearing a simple light blue dress, and she looked charming. Her cheeks were colored with a healthy flush, and it seemed that her upcoming marriage was making her very happy. Just like the questions had been fired at Madison before, they were now thrown at Ellie. Miss Thompson, is it true that you and Ian Weston are to be married? Have you already set a date? Why are you suddenly getting married? How long have you and Mr. Weston been discussing this? How do you feel about the child Mrs. Weston is carrying? Are you ready to be a stepmother to another woman's child? Unlike Madison, Ellie smiled at the reporters and answered their questions. Thank you for your attention regarding the marriage. She raised her eyes and met Madison's gaze with an undisguised look of pride and victory. Everything that you have heard is true. We will be getting married in the near future. I hope you can all come and attend the ceremony. Quickly, she began receiving everyone's blessings. Madison stood and stared at her, her demeanor neither arrogant nor impatient. If Ellie hadn't appeared then and there, Madison might have really started to believe what everyone was saying. However, as soon as she saw Ellie without Ian by her side, she was relieved. She knew Ian very well, and he would never have let her face all these reporters alone if he had truly been engaged to her of his own free will. Unfortunately for Ellie, this was something that she didn't know about Ian. Ellie steadily approached Madison and raised her chin a little, she said, Hello, Madison. I hope that you can also attend the wedding ceremony. Ian would be happy to have you there, too. Cameras were flashing all around, capturing the scene between the two women. Madison smiled pleasantly. She was gentle and strong. Ellie frowned, taken aback by the other woman's calm attitude. Even the reporters had expected a more dramatic reaction and they wondered whether Madison was on some sort of drug. Outside the crowd, the doctors who had come out of the hospital began to worry. However, they couldn't get through the throng and could only stand and watch. Others gathered around too, taking videos on their cell phones and watching the scene with anticipation. Some were even broadcasting the interaction live, and soon anyone with the internet had access to what was happening. Madison stood calmly in front of Ellie and said, Congratulations, Ellie. I hope that you have a wonderful wedding. The onlookers widened their eyes, surprised. Ellie smiled in ridicule at Madison's insincere words. But Madison hadn't finished yet. It just seems a little strange to me that you are here alone today. I know Ian. He would never let you face this kind of exposure alone if he really wanted to marry you. He would also never agree to invite reporters to the wedding as guests. He is a proud man, but he would never allow his fiancée to suffer. What Madison had said was true. In the reporter's past experiences, Ian had always done his best to protect those he cared about. He had also been very cautious and had even hidden his identity for a very long time. It just didn't make sense that he would suddenly act like this. Ellie paled. This was something she should have known about her fiancé if she had truly been as close to him as she pretended to be. 
The reporters started with their questions again. Miss Thompson, where is Mr. Weston now? Does he even know about the engagement? Why was the marriage announced by yours and Mr. Weston's family members, and not by you directly? Why hasn't Ian said anything about your engagement since it was announced? When Mr. Weston married Madison, he announced the marriage personally. Has your marriage been decided by your family, and not by you and him? Does Mr. Weston want to marry you? Ellie pursed her lips as she listened to the reporters, and she glared over at Madison. Her jaw was clenched tightly, and she took deep breaths as inconspicuously as she could. Damn you, Madison, she thought. With one final deep breath, Ellie forced a gentle smile onto her face and looked at the surrounding reporters. Of course he knows. The Thompson family and the Weston family have always had a marriage agreement, and if it hadn't been for my poor health in the past, perhaps Madison wouldn't even have been dragged into all of this. I have always been very regretful of how things went back then, she replied. She gave Madison an apologetic look. If I hadn't been so timid because of my body back then, you might still just be an ordinary student, and you wouldn't have to deal with all of this on your own. I'm sorry. Ellie thought that she had outsmarted Madison, but Madison was already a step ahead of her. She reached out and gently placed her hand on Ellie's shoulder, stopping her apology. Ellie looked down at her in shock. Won't you accept my apology? She asked. She looked like she was about to start crying. Ellie truly knew how to play on people's emotions. She had been weak her entire life, and it was a piece of cake for her to slip back into the role when she needed to. Sure enough, her eyes began to water, and the reporters again turned to berate Madison. Mrs. Weston, why are you unwilling to forgive Miss Thompson? Are you upset that Miss Thompson is marrying your ex-husband? Or are you still relying on your child to get back into the Weston family? You and Mr. Weston only got together because Ellie was held back by her illness. Don't you think that she deserves to marry the man she loves now that she's healthy? Madison almost laughed out loud. She gazed at Ellie calmly, now completely sure that none of it was real. Without a doubt, the marriage had been decided by the Weston family and the Thompson family, and Ian had no say in it. If he had wanted to marry Ellie, he would have come with her. What's more, there had been many opportunities for him to be with her in the past, yet he had never expressed any romantic desire toward her. Ellie was satisfied that the reporters were all on her side, and she hid her glee expertly. She looked at Madison with an exceptionally wounded expression. I know that you hate me because I revealed that you aren't a Greenwald. I understand. It's completely natural for you to hate me. I don't blame you. But please don't hurt the baby. It's innocent, and this is all my fault. Ellie had gotten to the main purpose of why she had come there that day. It only took that one sentence for the surrounding reporters to explode with questions again. How simple, Ellie thought. What does Miss Thompson mean by this? Are you not planning on giving birth to the child? Do you not want your child anymore? What does the Weston family have to say about this? What are you hiding? Why didn't the Westons take you back in even after you discovered that you were pregnant? Is there a reason why they resent you so much? Miss Thompson is begging you. Why don't you respond to her? Tears flowed down Ellie's face, fooling everyone. Madison's expression instantly turned cold, and she looked out at the people seriously. Ellie wasn't afraid of overkilling it. She took Madison's hand. I promise that I will be a good mother to the baby. I will treat it as my own. I'm saying this here and now before all these people, because I am determined to take care of the child. Please don't hurt it. I don't mind if I don't have my own child with Ian. I will love this baby unconditionally. The people watching began talking amongst each other. Isn't this a bit too much? I bet Madison is using the baby as a bargaining chip to get back into the Weston family. I heard that Ellie's health was really bad before she got a new heart. She's finally recovered, but look at how Madison is treating her. How can she be so cold-blooded? Look at Ellie crying. 
You can tell that she's really heartbroken. Having Ellie raise the child would help everyone. They spoke over each other and didn't care how loud they were being. It was almost as if they wanted Madison to hear what they were saying. Everybody was criticizing her mercilessly. Ellie was still holding onto Madison's hand, and Madison's expression was quickly becoming ugly. Ellie's words resounded in her head, and she felt herself growing impatient. She threw away Ellie's hand in disgust. Ah! Oh, Ellie called out, falling to the ground. What are you doing? Someone called out from the crowd. Do you really think that you can do anything you want just because you're carrying Mr. Weston's child? Did she just push her? How can she treat people like this? She's such a vicious woman. This time, the people's accusations were true, as Madison really had intended to push Ellie to the ground. She was tired of her acting weak. The discussions around her became louder and louder when Madison made no attempt to apologize or explain her intentions. However, nobody dared come too close to her for fear of hurting the child. Otherwise, she may have been completely swarmed by them. I don't understand, Madison said, looking down at Ellie. She was still lying on the ground. The crowd became quiet, eager to hear her speak, and her words rang out clearly. When did the world become like this? It's my baby, so why should you have any say in who will raise it? Are you its father? No, and you're definitely not its mother. I am. Don't try to mask your true intentions, Ellie. You want to steal my child away from me, because you can't have any of your own. Everyone stiffened. None of them would have even imagined that the beloved Ellie Thompson would try to steal another person's child for herself, just because she couldn't conceive herself. They also knew that the Westons were very conservative and placed a great amount of importance on continuing the family line. It was hard to believe that Diana would allow Ian to marry a woman who wouldn't be able to give him a child. If you and Ian want to get married, go ahead. I won't stop you. I'll even attend the wedding if you really want me to. But Ellie, how do you plan to marry Ian when he obviously has no intention of making you his wife? Everyone around remained silent as they watched the roller coaster of a scene.